welcome back to astronomy the open stacks textbook open free resource and this is going to be chapter nine chapter nine is on cratered worlds here is buzz aldrin second man to walk on the moon we'll be going back to the moon by 2024 Two sides of the moon, one side on the left faces us, and we see the dark maria or seas. This is a lava plain, basically. <coughs> and on the far side, we see many, many craters. I do see a shallow area where there could have been a sea here in that big crater. But mostly craters. Jack Schmidt was a geologist that got to walk on the moon and design some of the experiments that uh, they did there. Handling moon rocks. This is something that is taken with great, great care, as you might imagine. They are mostly at the Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas, and I have the authority of NASA to uh, get moon rocks, uh, get them, um, and also meteorite samples. I can get moon dust, moon rocks, pebbles, and also meteorite samples. Um, pretty neat stuff. Unfortunately, they require an armed guard and a bank vault to store them. Well, we went to the moon on a Saturn V rocket, and here's one, I uh, don't know where it is, Houston. Tycho Crater, you've st studied Tycho now, and I think when you can get a shadow on the craters, you get a really neat image. And the best time to look at the moon through a telescope is first quarter moon. When the shadow goes right down the middle of that moon, you get really neat shadows uh, in those craters and mountains. The lunar highlands are old, heavily cratered. Over 80% of the moon's surface. Dave Scott on Apollo 15, took this image of a lunar mountain. Here's a great picture of the Maria. And a rock from the lunar Maria, a sample of basalt. And what does that mean? Well, that means that this is magma rock. It's heated up rock. <clears throat> filling in those lava plains and so we know from going to the moon and checking that rock and we know it's basalt that is a rock you would find in Hawaii so pretty neat this is a the youngest lunar impact basin a large one formed 3.8 billion years ago and really, since then, not much more cratering has gone on. That all happened the first little bit of the solar system, the first billion years. And here is an Apollo astronaut's footprint in the lunar soil. So a lunar impact crater kind of looks like at the base, like a terrestrial volcano on Earth. And in the middle of the big ones, you see this splash, and that is a central peak, that little splash of lava back up. So this is how you make a, a meteorite impact. You have the rock from space coming in to hit the moon or any object. It blasts out what we call ejecta, E-J-E-C-T-A and that blankets the crater and the surrounding area and you can see this 
if you go to Meteorite Crater up in Winslow, Arizona, uh, outside of Flagstaff, uh, they have, um, I don't know if you can fly over it right now, maybe, um, I didn't, um, but you can see from miles the different ejector patterns that's been put into those rocks out there, really neat. We really should take a field trip out there, we could just all go together. I'll fly out. So here's that central impact feature. That splash, I said. Pretty neat crater. And I'll tell you from my own research that I did with NASA that Mars craters and Moon craters look similar, but a little bit different. And you can tell if you just take a black and white image. Is this from the moon or from Mars? Uh, those who are trained like I am can tell you. So you're going to be looking at the phases of the moon in a lab. And these labs that I have that are extended, like this one goes 10 or 12 weeks. Um, your event participation lab where you go to an event. I will give you extra weeks built in to uh, take care of that weeks that you don't have a lab do. Here is a real image we've taken of the moon crossing the face of Earth and a 2015 image from a climate observatory took this picture and it shows you that the moon is really not very bright at all. Oh here's Meteor Crater and I have been there. There is a road right here, and everybody I think in Arizona knows that road. Uh, if you have not been, I want you to go sometime during this class before it starts snowing up in Flagstaff. If, you can, if you're local to Arizona, I know it could be a four or five hour drive, take it and go see it. It's outside of Flagstaff. This is three quarters of a mile around. 660 feet deep. Now I live in Missouri and we have the St. Louis Gateway Arch in Missouri up there in St. Louis. You can put the entire Gateway Arch inside a meteor crater and you can see rocks and earth spewing out in this very large picture. So go see Meteor Crater and you will uh, really get a, a great education in astronomy and geology because that's really what it is and that's what I went into was a double major in astronomy and geology. So here we show that the crater rates really dropped off after the first billion years. I know of three or four times in my whole career that I have heard of maybe somebody amateur catching a meteorite strike light up the moon. It's pretty rare. Here we have Mercury. Internally it's uh, a big core really. Big core there. And there's a lot of interesting properties with Mercury that have to do with this core. Its size, uh, its temperature, what it goes through, um, <clears throat> things like that. We can measure the rotation of planets by looking at Doppler radar like we would in looking at our meteorology or weather. And if you look at one side of a spinning planet and capture a radar image, it would say it was coming to you. If you image the other side of the planet, that's turning away from you, then we know it's moving away. So we call those a blue shift towards. A blue shift is movement towards me. Towards me is a blue shift because the colors get more blue, but it's not really light. It's magnetic radiation, electromagnetic radiation. 
and as it's coming towards you, the wavelengths become much shorter between each peak of radiation. So it's blue shifted. If the object is going away from us, we call that a red shift. That would be a shift going away from us. And so we can measure the rotation rate of a planet based on a radar estimate. And we got this image, uh, I forgot from the Messenger spacecraft, which was built specifically to go to Mercury. One of the big craters on Mercury is Caloris Basin, the impact feature, a flooded impact basin, the largest known structure on Mercury. These cliffs going across these craters and plains are called oh, are called scarps and scarps are these jagged cliffs if you imagine seeing the ocean off of a cliff in southern california there's just land and then it drops off to the ocean and that's uh, really what that's doing there it's like a big cliff that's been shelled up to its relative position, and you get this big cliff. Now, if you were to jump off, you're not going to fall very fast. Mercury doesn't have very much gravity, but uh, that's what we have. And we see this probably because of the heat difference we have on Mercury. Mercury gets very, very hot because it's so close to the sun and there's no atmosphere. It also gets very cold on the dark side, not facing the sun, again, because there is no atmosphere so we had that so that was chapter nine thanks for joining me and the dogs again and we'll see you well did you enjoy that episode of 10 minute astronomy if so check out all the other videos in that playlist for 10 minute astronomy and other videos on my channel and then hit the subscribe button right there thanks